Good morning, family. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. <clears throat> it's your brother Sam Lopez, <clears throat> aka DJ Sam Rock, and I'm struggling right here <clears throat> with a little cold that I have. <clears throat> so excuse me <clears throat> for the raspiness of my voice, but we're going to push through, amen, and I'm going to try um, to get this done. This one is called <clears throat> Results of Trusting God. This is part number five, the last part of a five-part series that, man, it took longer than usual just because of life and traveling and time with family. But this is part five. This is where I wanted to end with this series. Results of Trusting God. This is part five. We noticed that <clears throat> there's the results in trusting God. What's in it for you? When you are trusting and putting your hope and faith in the true, living, holy, righteous, loving God. What's in it for you, right? I know it sounds selfish, but it's a question that everybody asks. So why not ask the question, what is it, um, what's the results of trusting in God? And we went through four, and this is the fifth one. The four that we went through as a recap, for those who missed the series, you could go back and start from part one of this series. <coughs> the first one is excuse me, is protection. Protection. Second one is gladness. The third one is peace. The fourth is blessing. And today, we're going to talk about confidence. Confidence that God <coughs> gives us when we trust in Him. An amazing confidence. Some people call it Godfidence. But it's confidence. Amen. And his word and his love and his grace and his mercy and his power and his protection and his hoping in God never disappoints. I'll just put that to make it short. Hoping in the Lord never disappoints. You will never be disappointed when you put your whole faith and trust in the living God. He's an amazing God. He does it all um, because he wants to, not because he has to, because he wants to. And why? What causes God to do these wonderful, miraculous things? things for us is love because by definition God is love in essence God is love amen and that's a powerful thing man so let me just share this real quickly to my group so that way they know we're here amen <clears throat> on the blaze Bible studies groups and boom there you go so we're here so if you have any questions comments concerns or any prayer requests my prayer requests for you, for me, a man would be uh, to help me um, to get over this chest cold that I have been fighting for a couple of days. Amen. So my voice would be cleared up. Amen. And I'll feel a little better. Amen. Unselfish plug, right? Uh, and I'll be praying for you and your family as well. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat for where, from wherever you're watching or listening to this from. It should be a way to connect with us here on uh, these platforms, amen. Uh, so that way we could stay in connection and stay in contact with each other because that's what God wants us to do anyway, amen. He wants us to be in communication with Him first and communication with one another, right? And that's the best way we could get this confidence of knowing what we know and knowing who we know uh, through Christ Jesus, amen, who gives us the strength, who gives us the strength to get everything that He wants done through our lives. And we can have confidence in that. Amen. So, I wrote here was, trusting God shows confidence that his timing, his timing, not my timing, not your timing, but his timing is perfect. <coughs> How many people have been in a time where they desperately needed God to respond or to react or to really get involved, amen, with what's going on in our lives? Right. I've been there. You've been there. And the timing seems off. Right. It seems like, God, I needed you yesterday. We see it in the scripture when Lazarus, um, a friend of Jesus, dies and their sisters are like, Jesus, where were you? And Jesus comes after the fact. But notice that Jesus came right on time to raise Lazarus from the dead and to show Lazarus's family, his sisters and all those who were there present. And to this very day, we know because we see the story that he came right on time. Jesus, God, shows up on time. His timing is perfect. We're going to be in Psalms chapter 112, verse number 7. Psalms 112, 
verse number seven on today's morning Devo with your bro Sam Lopez. So let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. And on the other side of those 60 seconds, we'll get right into today's morning Devo. So Lord God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm already feeling my chest clear up and my voice clear up. Thank you so much for your power, your healing power. I pray the same healing power over every single person that's listening and watching right now, who's connecting now, who will connect later, who will listen later, who will watch later. Amen. A blessing, a hedge of protection over me and my family, them and their families as well. In Jesus name, I pray, Lord God, the Archmen angels, the minister angels, the warring angels to annihilate Every single tactic of the enemy, every plan of the enemy will be canceled by the power of your word, by the power of your grace, mercy, and love, and who you are by way of your spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that the results of trusting in you gives us all confidence in knowing that you are the true, living, holy, righteous, loving God that we serve. I thank you, Lord God, for saving, rescuing, for responding, for restoring, for redeeming, for reacting, amen, in our lives. And I thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth on a day-to-day basis. So I pray, Lord God, for every single person that's listening or watching, that they will get a real, real sense of confidence, knowing that they could put their whole faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name, I pray this with thanksgiving, knowing that you hear these prayers and you answer them according to your purpose and plan for each and every individual person in their lives as well. In Jesus' name, And those who agree, we say amen and amen. So let's go for it. Let's take a minute. Help me share this out. If you know people right now that are not on social media for whatever reason, for good reasons, you can send them straight to my YouTube page, which is DJ Sam Rock on YouTube, or you can share the links, sowinnerswithaz.org or live.sowinnerswithaz.org. When we're live, that's the the actual website to go where we're live. Um, to catch up on replays and all that and everything that's happening with the Cell Radio Network and Soul Winners Ministry, Soul Winners with a Z dot ORG is the go-to link. So I'll be right back. Amen. We're back. We're back. Let's see what the Lord has for us today um, by way of his word. We're calling this one confidence. And this is the series, the results of trusting God. This is part number five of a five part series, because I knew that we had to take a break off of the regular things that we were doing, even though there's nothing really regular when it comes to the word of God. But usually I would go through uh, a series of things, uh, different topics that God would give me. And he prompted me to take a moment in time to just people, including myself, wanted to know what are the results of trusting in God? What What's the benefits, in other words? What's going on here? Like, why should I put my whole faith and trust in God? Well, there's five reasons that I could see from the scriptures, and five results are protection, gladness, peace, blessing, and today we're talking about confidence, Psalm chapter 112, verse number 7. So let me get this ready, prepared for the screen. For those who are listening, welcome back um, to the radio network and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I see the numbers. It gives me more confidence and to know and more hope and realize that 
people are still seeking the Lord Jesus. People are still seeking truth. People are still um, wanting the word of God. Amen. And they're, they're not resisting as much as I thought people would be resisting the love of God, the hope of God, trusting in God, right? The word of God, Holy Spirit, God, amen, that is present in our days daily. Um, and we'd say things, a lot of people, including myself, sometimes I say, you know, that God will rust on us, surround us, and this time and third by his Holy Spirit. But I realized, why am I asking God to surround me or to fill a room when he's present in me? And every living person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have Holy Spirit in us. Amen. So we don't have to continue to ask him to be surrounding us, filling us, filling our rooms and all this other stuff. Let's stick to the word. Let's trust God. Let's have confidence in what what he has done and what he is doing daily, moment by moment in our lives, personally and corporately. Amen. So we don't have to you know, continue to beg for God's Holy Spirit, which is present in us, to be um, restoring and rescuing us. And this time the third one, he's already there, present. I think what happens is we shut his voice down. We shut his voice and we are so concerned with other voices and other things that we're not allowing the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit God, to speak and be heard in our lives. Amen. That could be that could be it because I don't know why I ask for certain things sometimes myself when I know for sure that God and I have confidence in God being in me, the hope of glory, and for God being in every single person who puts their whole faith and trust in God, we have the hope of glory, which is found in the Word of God. Amen? And I believe the Word, and I hope you believe the Word too. So here we go. Psalms chapter 117, verse number 7. He will not fear bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting, and here it is, confidently relying on and believing in the Lord. Now, bad news is going to come. Um, whoever is telling you, because I've heard this being preached and I heard this being taught in circles of Christianity around the country and around the world, that once you have God, when bad news comes, amen, it will be uh, eliminated and it will be always good news. And that's not true. You can read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for yourself. There was bad news coming. Um, by way of prophecy, there's bad news coming by way of the Lord himself when he said he was going to die on a cross. To the people right then and there, that's not good news. That's bad news. But God knows the end result and it became good news. But he, the person who trusts in God, the person will not fear bad news, right? His heart. And of course, this is in the masculine. And woman, this includes you, um, mankind. His heart is steadfast, trusting, confidently relying on and believing in the Lord, not believing in a religion, not believing in a system, not believing in some kind of organized church, but believing in the Lord himself. Very important because a lot of people put their whole faith and trust in idols. They put their whole faith and trust in systems. They put their whole faith and trust in programs. They put their whole faith and trust in churches and all that. But listen. When you have, we need this confidence, we need to rely and believe in the Lord himself. So when bad news comes, and it will come, we will, we will not fear that bad news. And we will have our heart focused and steadfast. We will have our trust, and we will rely on the living Lord of the word. Amen. He is the living word of God. He is the Lord Jesus. So I don't know another way to explain it other than put your faith, hope, and trust in and God, amen, and realize that he's in us and working through us daily, not just periodically, not every, not just every week or every weekend or weekdays during um, prayer services or whatever the case may be. All those things are good to do. Go to prayer services. As a matter of fact, why did I say that? Amen. Prayer services should be lit. It should be like the most occupied day of the week or day of the month. Prayer is key, man. We're connecting and we're communicating with the living, holy, righteous God, the chief cornerstone. The one who we pray to is the one who answers those prayers. So prayer meetings and all that, amen, should be popular. It should be around the world popular. 
not just in certain circles of Christianity. It should be popular every day, every time. People should be showing up by the by the truckloads, by the busloads, amen, um, to these prayer meetings. But that's just something that I don't know what happened uh, with us as believers. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's still believers in Christ that pray. They get together and pray, amen. And it takes two more. It doesn't take a lot. But in my humble opinion, I think that should be key to getting together to pray to the living, loving, holy, righteous God. Amen. So we could get more confidence in who he is and what he's doing in our lives. Bowman of scripture, Psalms chapter 56, verse number four, Psalms 56, verse number four. The Bible says in God, whose word I praise, it goes praise. If you want confidence, praise God. Praise in God. I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? Good question. Amen. I will not be afraid. And trusting in God gives you confidence that whatever bad news, whatever is going on in this world, amen, we're not supposed to be afraid of those things because the fear that the world is trying to put on us, the fear that the enemy is trying to put on us, it's not from the spirit of God. Fear is not given to us by God, amen? That's the spirit. The spirit of fear was not given us to by God. So who did this fear come from? It came from the world system, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, Amen. And the devil himself. So we're not going to be afraid. We're going to have confidence in what the word of God says and what the word of God is doing in our lives. Brother Frank, God bless you. Good morning, my brother. Relying on my Lord is all real. I believe in him every single day. Amen. Yes. And you have more confidence knowing that God is there, that God is Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there, the God who is here, the God who is everywhere, omnipresent God, all powerful God. He has all authority. Amen. What he says happens. Right, so we have confidence in that. Thank you so much for um, the comment, my brother, and my friend. So, the results of trusting in God are amazing. Amen. You could read all through the scriptures. You could read the story of Abraham. Right, he trusted God. God sent him to places where he didn't, he didn't even know where he was going. He just trusted in the voice of God and relied on God, not on opinion. He didn't rely on you know a system. He said, "Wow, I'm hearing from the Lord, and I'm going to trust." God and he went. Abraham, if you could read Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 to 19, that's that illustrates the confidence that Abraham, the father of our faith, had in the Lord. Amen. So we could look at his life and be like, well, this was a real man in a real situation, being spoken by a real God. Amen. It's being spoken to by a real God. And he left everything he knew behind and went forward and went into unknown territory. Because God told him to go there. Amen. And because he went, he was now known. He's now known as the father of faith. I mean, he did what God asked of him. Three young men. Remember that? In Daniel chapter number three, you can see what these three young men did. And how they had confidence in the living, holy, righteous, loving God. And how they didn't let fear get into their hearts. And didn't let fear get into their mind. But they did according to what God wanted them to do. And now we read about them um, in the story in the book of Daniel chapter 3. How about the centurion soldier? Amen. In Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 to 10, we see the centurion soldier just trusting in the Lord and say, listen, if you do this, Lord, I know it will be done. Amen. I don't know. If, <clears throat> I hope that's the story because there's two stories I'm thinking of. The soldier that cut Jesus on the side and said, truly, this is the Son of God, or the other centurion um, that's found in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 10. Let me go there real quick. I have a couple of minutes. Matthew chapter, what did I say? Matthew chapter 8, 5 to 10. Let's read it real quick. And this will give you confidence. When you read the Word and you read the stories about people in the Bible, amen, um, that literally trusted God, and then you see the blessing that they received by trusting God, those are the results of trusting God. Amen. And look at this. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 10. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading him <coughs> with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed. True story. My servant is at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. 
And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, only speak a word and my servant will be healed. You could also see the cross reference, Psalm 107, verse 20. Verse 9, for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. So he knew about authority. So when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Verse 11, and I say to you, this is the Lord speaking, and I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. So we see it here that this centurion had great confidence in God and Jesus, knowing that all Jesus had to do was send the word. He said, no, nah, don't come to my home because, you know, my home is not ready to fit. It's not fit for a king. It's not fit for a savior. Amen. That's what the centurion was saying. Just speak the word because he knew he had confidence in the Lord Jesus. He had seen Jesus with his own eyes to perform miracles, signs and wonders and said, listen, if you just speak a word, I know my servant at home will be healed in Jesus name. Right. So it's an amazing thing when you trust in God, you trust and the results of trusting in God today. We're talking about confidence, boost your confidence, not boost your ego. It boosts your confidence. We don't have faith in faith. We have faith in the living, loving, holy, righteous, loving God. He's alive. Amen. And he does what he says he's going to do. When God promises you or me something, those promises come to pass. It's not just like wishful thinking, like a lot of people think this is, or they think it's like, you know, imaginary mystical stuff. No, this is real life situations, real life God, a real life son, a real life father, a real life Holy Spirit. Amen. That's living and is present. He is present in our day to day activities. Now, we can resist that and we could say, nah, God, I got this. I'll do it my way because you might take too long. Whatever situation you might be thinking, you can do better than God. Yeah, man, I'll be praying and I'll be praying that doesn't influence me at all either because we could tend to do things on our own and then give God credit later after we did what we did. But I'd rather just trust God. Amen. Stay still. And I know there's a lot of things happening day to day. There's so much happening. I need God day to day. Amen. I need him in my finances. I need him in my health. I need him in my marriage. I need him with my children. I need him with my my church family. I need him every single day. Um, amen. To keep me. So I have confidence in him. But I do things. I don't stay waiting and do nothing and say, well, God got this. So all I got to do is sit here and wait. No, I do while I'm waiting. And when I need rest, yeah, I rest in Christ. That's who. We can rest in God knowing that we can have confidence that when we go to God, when we're tired, he will give us rest. And that rest fills us up with more energy, more zeal, more faith and more confidence in knowing that he is worth trusting. He is trustworthy. So we see the psalmist. He said he won't have fear of bad news. Amen. An indicator that bad news can happen and we will have bad news that we will hear about and we'll be experiencing some bad stuff. But we're not supposed to be afraid. Do not be afraid of the bad news. Why? Because we're steadfast and trusting in the Lord. We're focused on the perfecter of our faith. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. He will never put us to shame. He will never leave us in a stuck position. He will always give us confidence to get back up and to move forward. And the things that he wants us to do and for the things that he wants us to accomplish have you noticed that God calls you and me to do things that we know 100% we can't do it if he's not doing it through us? Amen. How many people can raise that? I mean, I know for sure 99 something percent of the time when God speaks into my life, I know that it's him, number one, and I know that I can't do it without him. 
So if God is asking you to do something today and you know for sure that it's God and you know for sure you can't do it on your own, then have confidence and trust in him. Do not be afraid. Just move forward. Amen. And follow the example of Abraham. When God told him to go into lands, uncharted worlds and uncharted lands, he went trusting and having confidence in God. When he told uh, Abraham to sacrifice his only son, he went and he did what God asked of him to do. And you know the story. He was testing his faith. And when he found that his faith was trustworthy, amen, God just blessed him so abundantly, man. It's an amazing story and an amazing life that that man lived because we're still talking about him thousands of years later. We're still talking about Abraham. Peter, remember Peter? Um, He had confidence in God and he had experienced the results of trusting in the Lord himself. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, 24 to 32. You can check it out for yourself. Amen. I'm running out of time here, so I can't go to it. But it's all riddled through the scripture, plastered all over the Bible, man. Reasons to trust God. The results of trusting God, all from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. These men and women of God showed us that God is so trustworthy. So why wouldn't we think that when they trusted God back then, and he was trustworthy back then, why would we think that he's not trustworthy today? Put your hope, faith, and confidence in God. Amen. And you will experience the results of trusting in God. And what were they? The protection of God. Psalm 511. Proverbs 35. 30 verse 5. The protection of God. These are the results of trusting in God. The gladness of God uh, that we find in God. Psalms chapter 64 and 10. Amen. Um, Also, the peace of God. Listen. I wouldn't exchange the peace of God for any amount of money you offer me. And you could give me a hundred million dollars and say no peace or ten dollars and say peace. Listen, I said keep your money, I want peace. I don't care if it's ten or ten million. The peace of God, we see that Isaiah chapter twenty six, verses three and four. How about this? The blessing. Who wouldn't want to be blessed by God? I mean we sing about it, we talk about it, we preach about it, but um, do you really want to receive the blessing? Put your hope, faith, and trust in him. You can see that in Isaiah 12, 2, Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. The blessing, excuse me, the blessing God is Psalm 84, 12, Jeremiah 17, 7. And today's is confidence, Psalms 112, verse number 7. So that's the five parts, man. You can see more in the scriptures for yourself. But I wanted to um, get you going by at least five of the results of trusting in God. So I'm out of time. God bless you all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for this morning, Devo. God bless you all. God keep you all and remember always that God is good. Peace.